Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. Good Friday this year. Did everybody get a bulletin? Okay. Uh, the names of people serving are in the bulletin, and I, so I'm not going to read those to you. Also, I do want to say we will be having Journey to Jesus tomorrow. Uh, if it rains, let's pray for the rain to get itself out of our system before 4 o'clock tomorrow. But if it rains, we're still going to do it. We'll just be in the fellowship hall, okay? We're going to do it. I want to thank uh, Jennifer Barnes for locating the worship plan that we're using tonight and then doing some editing. And I want to thank Tony Barnes for some great technology work and some great thinking about how to make this uh, come together. Uh, they're behind the scenes, but they've been driving the ship through this, and I appreciate them very much. And then, um, you, we, of course, we thank our youth and our adults who will be sharing with us. But I want to ask you tonight to give God the gift of your concentration and focus on what is being said to you tonight. Give God the gift of imagination. You know, every time you read a book that you could, can't put down, or you watch a movie you have to talk about the next day, that didn't really happen. It was all in your imagination. The human imagination is a very powerful thing. And give God the gift of imagination so that you may think about what happened, you may feel what happened, and you may allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and work in your life this tonight as we meet together. When the service is over, I'm going to stand in front and simply do a hand gesture like this, and uh, that means we're going home. I'd like to ask that everyone will remain silent till we get outside the building to keep the mood going inside ourselves. So we'll have a brief prayer and then our acolytes will light our candles and we'll begin the service. Dear Lord, we thank you for coming and living and dying for us. Help us to see. Help us to understand. Help us to feel. Help us to hear what occurred that day. Help us to feel the disorientation and the fear and the anger and the hurt of the disciples that day. Help us to believe that you really did die for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let us pray. Dear Father God, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus. Help us tonight to use our imagination to see, feel, and hear the human tragedy and redemption of the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus. It is so easy for us as people to see the problems of the human race that are caused by those people over there. Help us to see how it is our sin and selfishness that created the need for your son to go to the cross. We ask that your Holy Spirit will cause us to understand how deep your love is so that we may respond to you in love tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. In the beginning, God created and said, it is good. All the beauty of the world, the beauty that calls our admiration, our gratitude, our worship at the earthly level is meant as a set of hints, of conspiratorial whispers, of clues and suggestions and flickers of light, all nudging us into believing that behind the beautiful world is not random chance, but the loving God. Quoted by N.T. Wright for all God's worth. Everything in the universe came from God, and he wants us to enjoy it, take care of it, and give him glory for it all. The next time you see a sunset, a moonrise, a flower, or your best friend, give God the glory. Imagine your favorite part of creation. Imagine what it must have been like for God to create it. Reflect now on all the good things God has created. For one 
But then, all far short of the glory of God. Where do you see brokenness in the world? In our community? In your own heart?
take a few minutes and reflect on that brokenness. From Luke 22, 39 through 46, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, 
and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray, that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being on, in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. And from Matthew 26, 45 through 30, 46, Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered to the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus knew all the pain and all the suffering he was about to experience. Can you sense his anguish? Do you feel his struggle? Yet he still says, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus' sacrifice wasn't a spur of the moment decision. He deliberately chose to take the journey to the cross. Jesus told his disciples of the pain that was to come to him. Luke 9, 51 tells us, Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be received up, that Jesus steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. In spite of the great cost, Jesus shifts his ministry to go to Jerusalem, where he knew he would suffer and die. Is there an area in your life where you need to make a choice to love and to sacrifice? Even if it comes with a cost, reflect on that now. Matthew 26, 14, 16. The one called Judas is correct, went to the chief priest and asked, What are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you? So they countered out for him 30 pieces of silver. From, Ju from then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. And from Matthew 26, 47, 50, while he was still speaking to Judas, one of the twelve arrived. With him, with him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now from the betrayer had arranged a signal then I mean, with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. Going at once to Judas, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then the man stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply. Not even to a single charge. The governor was 
amazed. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called Messiah? You see, Pilate knew. He knew that it was out of their own self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him a message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with, with Jesus, who is called the Messiah, Pilate asked. And they all answered, crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water. And he washed his hands in front of them, saying, Now I am innocent of this man's blood. It's your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Well, then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. What was it like listening to the crowd? Were you annoyed? Can you sympathize with Pilate wanting to just to just give in. In what ways do we give in and take the easy road? Take some time to reflect on that now. to 
From Matthew 26, 69 through 75. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with, the, with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again, and an oath with an oath. I don't know the man. And after a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are, the, you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. And then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Sometimes our betrayal is not motivated by financial gain or rather social acceptance. The greatest single cause of atheism in the world is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and walk out and don't deny him with their, and deny him with their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world finds unbelievable. Think of t times you have denied Jesus with your words, actions or not actions. From Matthew 27, 27 through 31. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the Praetorium and gathered the whole co company of soldiers around him. They, they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him in the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. And from Luke 23, 33, and 34, when they came to the place called the skull, they crucifi crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus talked a lot about loving enemies and forgiving others. Here at the cross, he goes beyond words and ideals and teaches us with an example. With the nails digging into his flesh and the hammer 
hovering. He offers forgiveness. In your life, who are the soldiers with nails and hammers that you could and should extend forgiveness for? From Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, verses 44 to 49. And it was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, and the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And from John's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 28 to 30. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that the scriptures would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge in it and put the sponge on the staff of a hyssop plant, and they lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. there 